Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and we've got a quick little technique for you this week. Also, if you guys are playing along with the home version, this week's square is uh, an apology for possible uh, noise due to water main construction or whatever is going on outside in front of my studio. There will be a download of the studio setup for this, so you don't have to worry about doing anything along with the video. Just watch. So if we can harken back to last week's tutorial, there was a shadow on this 2D phone that I made. So now that After Effects has the uh, Cinema 4D 3D renderer, I decided to mess around with that in a little bit of an unconventional way. So this comp actually has that turned on, and if we go in here, you can here's where you change it. This is normally set to classic, but you're going to want to change it to Cinema 4D. All right, I'm going to cancel because I already got that set. So we're going to kill this hey -o way -o layer, and we're going to kill this old shadow here because that's actually stopping the 3D from working. So just like in previous versions of After Effects, if you have a 2D layer in between your 3D stuff, like here's the light and here's my ground plane that's catching the shadow, if that's there and it's visible, it'll kill the 3D interaction. So let's kill it. So now you can see there's actually a nice little subtle shadow of where this is on there. Since you can't extrude a raster layer, I actually took this frame out of the cell phone comp and uh, put this shape right into here. So that's what this is. I extruded that and I put a light right over top of it and now it casts a shadow. And what's kind of neat about this is that you can go here, click on this light, which is way up there right now. I'm going to bring it down. And as you can see, maybe, this actually stretches out depending on where it is. So you can go in, hit A twice, and uh, change the darkness and all sorts of stuff, make this spread out more. But it really depends on how close the light is to your object, what kind of shadow it casts. So we're gonna move this back up, set this back, and there you go. You can turn this down if you want it to be more subtle. So you can see it doesn't really update too much in real time, but there you go. So you might be saying, hey, what, I, I can do that on my own. Why are you showing me this? But there's something that's kind of neat. So this guy originally had a shadow I made. I animated it in this style, you know, so it fits the style. But it moves as his feet move. But what's kind of neat is that you can actually take it and make it actually accurate to his walking. Now, this is getting cut a little bit off because I, this is just a quick demonstration where the ground plane cuts through his foot. But you can see that the shadow actually separates and changes based on his movement of his legs and these legs are actually 3d extruded shapes so let's play around with that so we have a studio set up in here we have a light our ground plane and a background and let's start by hitting command r pulling up our rulers let's draw one in here right about there we're gonna go to our front view and you can see this ground we're gonna just match that as close as we can it doesn't have to be exactly perfect and we'll go back to our active camera. So I'm going to double click up here in the polygon tool and make a new polygon. And what I want to do is I'm going to make a three-sided polygon, aka a triangle. Change this outer radius, and that's our triangle. All right, and I'm going to hit Y to pull our pan behind tool up. I'm going to drag on this, and I'm going to hit Command to lock it to the bottom. Because that's going to make what I'm going to do a lot easier. All right, I'm going to hit P for position. Keyframe that. I'm going to hit S for scale. Well, Shift S so that it opens both. Turn this off. Click a new one there. All right, we're gonna move this down 10 frames, move this thing down over here, down there. All right, and then one frame before, we're gonna keyframe scale. One frame after, we're gonna make it down here. And then we're gonna go up one frame, down 10. And we're gonna move this like here. I'm gonna go over here and move this up because hey, we lose energy when we bounce, we don't gain it. <clears throat> All right, so now we're gonna set this to easy ease. So it should smush down. Jump back out a little slow. We're gonna take this. We'll move that one frame over. And we'll go back to 100 like here. It's not the greatest bounce, but it'll do for now. So when we get up here, or as we're bouncing out actually, I'm gonna open this up, change this to a six-sided polygon, right about here. Move that down a little bit. And we'll make these easy ease. You can hit F9 or function F9 if you actually like to use your media keys like me. Mm, check that ish out. We can open up the graph right here if you actually want to make this uh, last a little longer. Okay. Playing around with that takes a bit, so we're going to just cut real quick. Okay, so you're probably wondering why, why did I do that? So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this layer. We're going to make it 3D. I've got this comp set up with the Cinema 4D renderer. I'm gonna hit AA because this triangle is a lush. And we're gonna turn on cast shadows, turn off accepts shadows, which is two clicks, and turn off accepts lights. So now we're kind of back to where we started. All right, we're gonna set this to like 80. So I want it to be kind of a nice thick shadow. 
And we're gonna go to the top view and we're gonna try our best to center this light up. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. All right, then we're gonna go back to our active camera. I'm gonna kill this because we don't really need it anymore. And you can see it gets bigger, smaller, and bigger. And then what's cool is you can send this light to AA as well and uh, you can make the darkness higher, you can make it less, you can change how much it's diffused after it leaves so that the higher it gets up, it leaves a bigger shadow, but it's more diffused. This lingers a little too long at the bottom. We'll fix that for the download. But as you notice, as this gets toward the top, you can actually see the perspective of this triangle. And I don't really want that. So we're gonna use an old 3D trick. I'm gonna make a new camera. I guess film trick technically too. I'm gonna set this thing to 200 millimeters. I'm gonna hit okay. So you can see it cleans that up a good bit. So now you'll notice that as we get lower, the shadow goes away. And what you can do to fix that is just bring up the darkness and you can bring this down too because we don't really need it to diffuse as much. It's still gonna almost disappear when it hits the ground. It should anyway. And since the object and the ground plane are in the same spot in Z, you can actually rotate this a little bit with the Andrew, Andrew Kramer rotate tool. And you can also take the shape, send it to AA as well, and expand that out a little bit. And that can fix that too. All right, guys, that's just a baseline of what can be done with this technique. I'm sure you can push it a lot further. This is just something I thought would be a cool look. So see what you can come up with. Also, a quick note, I've set up a Patreon. The link is down below if you guys want to help support Workbench. I'm still going to make free tutorials no matter what, so if you can't, don't worry about it. But if you can, that's awesome. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great content. I'm Joe from Workbench, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.